Elmer started in 1965 after my dad started a company with a, a friend of his that didn't work out. They uh, kind of had different views on sales and operations, so uh, they parted ways, and he started Helmer by moving to New Orleans at the time, and where all the major oil companies had offices, and most of the activity was at that time. What is your earliest memory of the oil field and your father, whether it be the oil field in general or with Helmer? Going to Eastman Whipstock on Penhook Road. On Penhook Road, going to a, a big Quantum Hut building uh, back from the war days. And uh, that's where Eastman Whipstock was. And I remember going there and just being fascinated by, by the tools and, and all the people there once he started with Eastman Whipstock. I was in 53. Describe your father as a man and as a businessman. As a man, he was just a very hard worker, uh, very family oriented, especially to, to his mom and his parents. Very respectful. He was raised in a very, very small town. Like, they wouldn't even cost him light. Uh, as a businessman, he was just uh, jovial, well, well liked. Uh, in, in all my years with him, I think he died when he was 76, I never heard one ill word about him, not one. You know, nobody ever had anything bad to say about Hank Helmer. What do you feel helped propel him business wise and in, in, in business, and how did it evolve? His second wife. His second, you know, my mom was a great woman and a hard worker, but she was, I want to say, introverted so to speak, um, she, she came off of a farm where it was get up in the morning, you know, do your work, work in the field a little while, go to school, come back and, and work again. So she wasn't the most endearing wife. And so uh, my dad was a person that needed that. And he ran into my stepmother, Joan, Joan Bear, and at Chevron in, in, in New Orleans. And uh, I think she was the big propeller because she was a great, great business woman, such as my wife is today. So. Uh, she just knew how to meet people, how to network with people, how to kind of get under their skin and, and, and get with them to, to, to meld your relationship to where when he asked for business, it wasn't like giving him business, it was helping a friend. Mm -hmm. Any particular accomplishments that stand out? Cognac platform for Shell Hall. Uh, that was a signal in the oil field itself. The fact that they were working in uh, 1,200 foot of water instead of 200 foot of water, the fact that they had two big, big drilling rigs on there, two shell company rigs, 11 and 21. And, uh, and it was over 80 wells in, in one location. And, and the planning they went into it, and that kind of put our name on the map. And it really grew from there because we started getting more work from bigger companies. Talk about how you started out personally within the company. Uh, started out, I uh, went to work for them in 77. I was working for Floor drilling on a big uh, Marathon Eternal 300-foot uh, lake jackup. And I was working, I worked my way up from roustabout onto the floor, roughnecking, and then into derricks. And I came in one day and Dad said, you need to give a two-week notice. Uh, why do I need to give a two-week notice? Well, because you're gonna be a directional driller. Well, that very much intimidated me because all the directional drillers I knew were 40 and 50 and 60 and 70 years old, and I was 22. So it was, uh, that's how I started. And, Gave my two-week notice, made one more itch, and uh, went out to train in uh, South Marsh Island. Describe the transition from father and son and the growth within the company uh, from it being Hank Helmer to Richard Helmer going Ooh. through. <laughs> that was like, a, I think that was a slow transition. As I spoke about earlier, I came in after his accident and he didn't, uh, couldn't do as much as he, he used to be able to do. Plus. My stepmother was so instrumental in growing that company, and she was gone, so I think he kind of lost half of himself, to be honest, and uh, his soulmate, as you will. Uh, he, as most fathers do, let go gingerly, you know, a little at a time, a little at a time, until finally I felt, I guess he felt like I was, I was ready and could make the decisions I needed to make. But for a long time, I had a big title with no authority. Describe what you remember about the plane crash and how it may have changed the dynamic within the operations and the, and the company. Wow. I was on a, a Delta development well in East White Lake, south of Lafayette, and got a phone call that they were going to send some relief out for me, which was very, very odd. I mean, we were busy at that time. It was uh, December 19, 1980, and uh, they told me that they would send relief out, and I said, you never do that. Why are you doing that? And he wouldn't tell me. I said, well, I'm not leaving until 
you let me know what it is. And uh, my uncle by marriage finally said, uh, well, uh, his, his stepmother was my sister. Uh, I'm sorry, his sister. And uh, he said that uh, they had been in a plane crash. They, they crashed their own plane. I didn't know they had a plane. But they, uh, those days I was working 300 to 310 days a year, so I never saw my dad or my stepmother. And then he said, well, I said, well, where did they crash in Manny, Louisiana? So well, why are they in Manny? I never heard of that either. Well, they're building a camp up there. Okay. <laughs> you know, they were going to do the final deal and the ceiling was too low and there was a pilot error thing. But it, uh, it changed the dynamic because a lot of people within the company, uh, yeah, there, there was some pull, pulling and, and tugging for power. And when he laid up in the hospital, then I got thrown into into being the only heir. My sister was married with two children and uh, a surgery room nurse, so she obviously wasn't fooling with all fields. Uh, but that that's probably the biggest thing is that plane crash. What were the biggest initial challenges for you and how did you overcome them? <laughs> biggest initial challenge, being a salesman. Dad's, dad's uh, hit my introduction into sales once we nursed him back to health. It took about a year. Once he could kind of get dressed on his own and drive on his own, he said, okay, well, you've been at a year. There's no use to send you back offshore. So we're going to, I know you know how to drink. So we're just going to teach you to play golf and you'll be a salesman. It's like, okay. But not like my, my, my bride here. She, she, it comes natural to her. To me, it was, it's very unnatural. She can, she can talk uh, to anybody, anytime, anywhere. And I, I couldn't. I mean, I, I would just get nervous and freeze up. So that, that transition was tough. I mean, but after about 10 years, I could tolerate it, but I'm still not the best at it. How did you see the company evolve through the years? I did my best not, uh, not being a, a public figure or being very comfortable you know, meeting people to try and, and saw the uh, technology and the way people were transitioning from the old law field to the the new oil field, and not so much as, as where we are now, but statistics and, and this thing, the other, we, we were running 30 jobs at that time, so I had a lot to, to, to draw from. So it, um, just as the tools we were getting better and trying to publicize ourselves more rather than just wholly depend on relationships. What particular advances in technology stand out as ushering Helmer into the new era from when it first started till when it became. Oh wow, that was just several transition areas, but probably the biggest thing that tr transcended into directional drilling was the advent of the steerable motor and the measurement while drilling tool, because that, that cut so much time and, and effort off of, of, of you trying to do your job and you could do it continuously instead of coming in and out of the hole all the time. And it didn't take 30 seconds to take a survey where it sometimes took up to an hour, hour and a half, depending on your depth. What are you most proud of when you look back at your time with Helmer Direction? The longevity. There's just not many that last that long, untouched. And, uh, and uh, my dad's name. What do you see as the future of Helmer moving forward? My wife. I think she's going to do a tremendous job in carrying the name on. You've got to diversify. It's hard to keep up with the Slumberjays and Bakers. And, and, and uh, today's client is much different than, than yesterday's client. Uh, it's one of those things that you've got to, got to adjust with. So I think that uh, diversification and then ability to do things that you can, that you weren't really associated with directional drilling, but today it's more accepted that you can be a directional company and a water treatment company and a fuel company. Uh, there's many different things, but that's why I see the name carrying on that way. Anything else that you want to add on to you? Wow. Nothing but just to thank God for the wonderful ride that I've had. It's been, it's been an honor and awesome.